In today's video, I am going to be breaking down the scary truth behind Victor Wembanyama. He is unstoppable. Let's get down. Let's check him out really quickly. Make sure to go check out my hardest basketball shooting workout down in the description below if you want to be able to shoot the basketball from further away. Okay, so in this first clip, Victor Wembanyama gets that ball in the key and right away goes straight up. He misses the first one. He gets the putback jam. In reality, what should happen is, and what he's going to need to do in the NBA, is not mess around and do the quick push shots what he has to do right away is just dunk that thing down if he wants to be able to be great in the NBA he needs to be way more aggressive dunking this ball and he usually is I'm just picking this clip as an example because this next part he does dunk it anyways now this is actually something special he's out on the perimeter his teammate shoots the three and teammate misses but he's able to sneak past right there his box out man he uses his elbow goes over top of the head which is now technically a no-no in FIBA basketball but he's able to then get that ball look how much he's able to reach look at the span of like just the distance the raw distance of his reach to be able to grab this rebound and tip it back in is insane if we actually measure this this is just ridiculous this is from this point to here is 15 feet, so basically your, your your ability to reach is like 9 feet or more. And then when you start incorporating his ability to jump, you're looking at 14, 15 feet. This is absolutely insane. And then when you've got a player who can cut from the high post to the low post with a man already in the low post who sets up a lob, watch this, sets up that lob for the dunk. That is crazy. Being able to do that with a big man, with another big man on you, is just absolutely crazy. Now, coming off of this screen and roll, he attacks the rim hard. This is one of the issues that a lot of centers have, at least in uh, youth basketball and sometimes at the pro level too, is they won't rim run hard enough. Here he does. He's able to get that pass from his teammate, and then he's able to dunk it straight down. By the way, he needs to continue to dunk the ball. I know there's a lot of people saying he needs to be able to work his finessing around the rim. He's not going to be able to have that opportunity in the NBA. The only opportunity he's going to have is to dunk the ball. The NBA is much more athletic and a lot more larger than FIBA basketball or European basketball. The guys are big, and they're going to be looking to hit him and he's going to need to be able to dunk everything every time. However, I do like his passing ability. Here, he's able to get that ball, takes one dribble, spins off, and then he's able to pass to his teammate underneath the arm of his defender so that his teammate is able to score himself. Coming off of a screen here, he pops because his man tries to play as a drop defender slash hedge man for that screen. That backfired. He caught the ball on his left foot, Always want to try and step in with your right foot if you're a right-handed player. This is going to get your right side in line with the rim. And he's able to do that and, of course, drain the shot. Not many people are going to be able to guard that anyways. If we look at his release, his release is so high. If we actually measure this across, it's actually quite crazy. Like, his release is halfway up the backboard. Victor Weminyama could literally shoot three-point shots all game and have zero people, maybe one per team in the NBA, who could actually block a shot and touch near the top of the backboard. The only way to guard a player like this, if you're guarding a player who's taller than you, here's a quick tip. When he's going from gather up to set point, you need to strip that ball fast. That is when you need to strip it. It's risky, you'll probably get a foul call, but if you want to try and stop somebody, let's say he's a, let's just say really quickly that Victor's a 38% three-point shooter in the NBA. Who's to say he will be or not? But he's at that point over 33%. This is a more high quality shot than somebody attacking the rim, which means that he could be jacking up 15, 20, 25 threes a game because nobody can block something that high, at which point you need to start hacking away at the arms because guess what he could literally take 50 shots a game from three he could literally take every single shot a team has in a game and nobody is going to block that shot and if he shoots over 38 percent that team is going to win every single time he also knows how to score on a double team usually if you get double teamed you want to kick it out for a three but it doesn't matter look at the height difference right away he keeps the ball high he takes one dribble he gets hacked almost loses it but then he's able to plant that outside foot and then he's able to go for the finger roll like he could 
probably dunk that as well. Like, this guy is just absolutely insane. So this is actually why I always say never dribble in the low post unless you really have to. As soon as he dribbles, this guy is going down to try to get that ball. That's really the only way. He gets hacked, but he still has that ball and still has control of that ball. Now, instead, if Victor was to do a quick pivot off of this foot, shot fake, and then step through, he would be able to do the exact same thing and keep the ball high the whole entire time. And nobody's going to be taking that, and if they do, it's probably going to be called a foul. The scariest part about him is the fact that he can shot fake, get the guy into the air, and watch this. He takes one dribble, he takes one, two, three steps. But, because he takes that dribble, doesn't gather until he gets to his left foot, he can now take two steps. This is classified as a gather. We've always had a gather. Doesn't matter what people think. It's never been one and a half steps. You're allowed two and a half steps, which means that he can go right left and get right to that rim. And he's got soft enough hands for that shot to go in most of the time. Make sure really quickly to go check out my hardest basketball shooting workout down below. I hope that this video has helped you. If it has, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.